Hello there everybody and welcome back to Movie Scream. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 2023 film Saw X and this is directed by Kevin Grutert and stars Tobin Bell, Shawnee Smith and Samnav McCody Lund. Hope I got that one right. This story takes place between the events of Saw and Saw 2 and sees John Kramer take revenge on a bunch of people who used him for fraud. Just a quick heads up guys, there may be minor spoilers in this review, but it's basically everything you've seen in the trailer. Now the Saw franchise is a little strange to me. The first Saw is in my top 10 horror movies of all time, and I do think Saw 2 is one of the best horror sequels ever made, to be honest. I was quite blown away by how good that was. But everything else has been average to not very good, apart from maybe part six, which I thought was you know, a surprise, really. But overall, this series has just has a little bit of a cash grab feel to it. They killed off Jigsaw in Saw 3, and they found new ways to reinvent them and stuff. And it just felt like they were running out of ideas to me. And... Going into Saw X, I had that very exact same feeling. So what did I think of this movie? Let's find out. Well, during the first act, I noticed a nice little story emerging here, which was a little bit different, I suppose. The movie takes its time for the first 45 minutes to set up what is actually going on. And with most of the movies in the Saw franchise, we're usually just thrown straight into all the traps and little story segments are told in between each person being decapitated or killed in some sort of gruesome way. But no, this one was different. It didn't rush straight into things and thinking, everyone's come here for the traps and the death, we need to get into it. No, it took its time. And I liked that about this movie because one, it felt fresh and for the franchise and two, you're sort of built up with anticipation because you actually do know these traps are going to come eventually. It's all a little weird that this takes place between Saw 1 and 2 because these events have never really been mentioned in the franchise before and there's a lot that happens in this movie. But you somehow just excuse it. I mean, there are certain things that sort of grated on me a tiny bit, which I'll get to in a bit. But you sort of just accept what's happening here because... It just feels like a cool little segment in between the bookends of Saw 1 and 2. And I like the way John Kramer is sort of giving little nods here and there to the first movie and sort of stating that he's already started his games off. And I surprisingly felt myself sympathising with John Kramer in this movie. It's very strange to get on the side of a man who we know, going by the Saw sequels and stuff, has killed people for being murderers or simply misplacing their house keys <laughs> but i kept telling myself not to get on his side i know what the movie was trying to do it was trying to make him the main protagonist and he is in this film and as much as i tried not to get on his side because i know some of the terrible things he's done throughout this franchise it was like fight and sleep. I couldn't. I had to get on his side no matter how much I tried not to because these people he's teaching a lesson to in this movie are the absolute lowest of the low. And I think that just says how well the writers did with this movie. I mean, not to make him the villain anymore, but to make him the main protagonist. And I actually rooted for him in the end because I just wanted these vile, horrible people to get their comeuppance. And Tobin Bell really breathes new life into this character somehow, even after all these movies that have been made. You can't help but feel the guy has been dealt a shitty hand, really. You kind of feel sorry for him. And I just like how John Kramer is very calm in lots of situations and the way he reacts to things. And he's just got this very soothing voice. You can't help but listen to the guy when he talks. But I like how this is definitely the more focused on John Kramer in any of the Saw movies. You know, it's definitely his best performance in the franchise by far. This is not retribution. It's a reawakening. Now, one of these vile people that John Kramer is trying to teach a lesson to is played by Sinov McCody Lund. I think I've said it right that time. And I really enjoyed her performance here as Cecilia, I think her name is in the movie. She is one of my favourite horror villains in recent years, and a lot of people may disagree with that or anything, but every time she was on the screen, 
I just thought, man, what a horrible creature. I mean, she, I've never seen a character filled with such a black heart. She is willing to just let everyone go and you know, sacrifice anybody for her personal gain. She is the most selfish person you've ever seen. And if anyone in these sort of franchises deserves to be dealt a lesson, it's this person, and you absolutely pray that she gets the worst death imaginable. However, the biggest draw to these films is, of course, all these little booby traps that Jigsaw likes to put these people in, and I thought they'd done a good job of them in this film, for the most part. I mean, put it this way, I'm not easily moved by violence and stuff, but for some reason, I couldn't quite keep still in my seat. I mean, I was squirming and tightening up and not looking away, but just kind of wincing at the screen there when bones are being broke or legs are being cut off, cut off with chicken wire and stuff and characters are in extreme pain. My biggest problem with these traps, even though they're gory and fun as hell, is the fact that they seem to be a little bit unfair. Now, what I mean by that is the time limits. I mean, every sword trap really has a time limit and stuff, but it feels like some of the characters in this film have done all the hard work, and then there's an element of luck based there towards the end of them of the trap and how they get out, and that just didn't feel very jigsaw-like to me, personally. I got a bit of a mixed feeling here, it's not really a negative because it's my fault for watching the damn trailer and it's also the movie studio's fault for putting the trailer out this way, even though I'm not sure how else they could have done it, but for the first act where it's all getting built up and you know what's going to happen with John Kramer and why he's going to put these people in traps, you sort of see all that in the trailer. So for the first 45 minutes, I kind of knew where the movie was going. Even though I, I was enjoying the little build-up and stuff, in the back of my mind, I knew exactly what was going to happen just because I'd seen the trailer. And my wife had not seen the trailer. And after the film, she said to me, oh, I like the way they built all that up. I didn't see all that coming. And I kind of wish I was in her position, so that's my fault for watching the damn trailer. But I really wish these movie studios would also not give too much away. I mean, just give us a little minute teaser, that'll do me nicely. Now, one thing I do think they could have improved upon is a couple of scenes being trimmed a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong, this movie is very nicely paced. I was never bored. There's never really a dull moment, but I do think some scenes just kind of were dragged out a little bit there, especially the last 15 minutes. Not just the last 15, but that one mainly. I just felt like it went on a little bit too long, and I was like, okay, where are they trying to go with this now? They're really just pulling it along. So, yeah, there could have been like 10 minutes of the entire movie trimmed here, and it would have told the exact same story that we got. I also have one massive problem at the ending of this film regarding a certain character. It really pissed me off. I can't get into detail what it is without giving spoilers. Maybe you'll find out when you watch the movie, or if you've seen the movie, you'll know what I mean, but I couldn't quite believe that's the choice they went with. We also see Shawnee Smith return as Amanda here. Now, she's never really been one of my favourite characters in this franchise, I've got to admit. She kind of grates on me a little bit there. I know she has her fans, but she doesn't quite do it for me. However, there's this little side story going on with one of the victims that Jigsaw is trapped here. And this victim is a drug user. And Amanda sort of sympathises with her at times, and it's kind of her weakness. And Jigsaw notices this. And I thought this was going to go a little bit further and develop a more some sort of character arc or conclusion to that side story. But it doesn't, it kind of forgets all that after a little bit of setup and just fizzles out and it didn't really come to not. And I was like, why did you nod to that or hint that something was going to happen between these two? Because there was nothing really, it just seemed wasted. I mean, I don't get the hairdo either. This is up there with Gail Weathers from Scream 3 for contestant for worst horror movie hairdo of all time. You also have to suspend your disbelief a little bit here with how John Kramer can set all this up in such a small period of time. And this has been a common theme throughout the Saw franchise where he's planned all these big 
death traps in the present and for the future beyond after he's died and stuff and it's just thinking could you really do all this you know just plan all this out very quickly even with the help of amanda but i think you've just kind of got to let that go and for me personally i could because i'm just here to have a good time but some people may point to that and may not be able to see past it this is definitely one of the best films in the franchise to me though despite a couple of problems i think it's my favorite after saw one and two and it just didn't feel like it was churned out. It felt like there was a little bit more thought and heart put into the story. I'm just going to go ahead and make this movie now. I'm going to give Saw X a 7.5 out of 10. Man, there's not really a better feeling than going to see a new horror movie in a popular franchise or a franchise that you like. <sighs> I mean, I just get giddy every time. This is what I live for. This is my jam. Okay, guys, at the end of these reviews, I always like to leave a little fun fact. Now, what a fun fact for... Saw so X is that this is Tobin Bell's ninth appearance in the Saw franchise, despite being killed off in Saw 3. He doesn't really appear in Spiral, the book of Saw, although there is a picture of him in that movie at one point. Okay, guys, hope you all enjoyed this review. If you like horror, please give this video a like and subscribe if this is your sort of thing. And what did you think of Saw X? Are you a fan of the franchise? Are you a fan of this movie? Where does it rank in your Saw rank? And let me know. I'll try and get back to you all, I promise. Thanks so much, guys. You all take care, and I'll see you all in the next video.